Hello everybody. Okay, so today we're going to do a little bit of painting. No drawing, just painting. Um, in yesterday's class, we drew a squirrel making pear and rocket salad. Okay, so we got as far as the drawing stage because you run out of time for the painting stage. So what I'm doing today is I am painting in what we drew yesterday. This is the result kind of the same except the one that I did yesterday my daughter said that my squirrel looks like a vampire it doesn't look anything like a vampire I don't think today's looks like a vampire either no no vampires there Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you like tons of tips for how to work your watercolour and how to get it to behave itself. So I hope it's really useful. In yesterday's class, we recreated this drawing and we didn't get time to paint it. So what I'm going to do is paint it because I have to paint it anyway. So I might as well put it on camera so that you can see how it works. And if you were at the drawing bit of the class, you will be able to paint it with a little bit of guidance if that is what you need or indeed would like. Okay, so here's as far as we got yesterday. You can see all the pencil lines. Let me just bring it close. You can see all the pencil lines. So I basically showed the class how to get strong shapes for character design that you might be coming up with. And yes, this is the strangest looking squirrel in the world. And I'm just gonna rub out all those pencil lines. <sighs> because don't forget, once you paint on top of pencil lines, it has the effect of kind of sealing them in. I'm using my um, my squirrel hairbrush here, but I am looking for another one with a more synthetic -y point. I can't find one, so it'll have to do. Okay, colors. Burnt sienna. Now I did use Aquarius orange mixed with burnt sienna for my first drawing but it's a bit too orangey so I'm just going to stick with the burnt sienna what I'm going to do is put strong color on the outer parts of the squirrel with a concentrated version of the paint and then I'm just going to clean off the brush give it a good wiping off on this side of my pot my water container and I'm just going to bring that out to the edge of the squirrel And I'm going to do that for all squirrels. This sh paint box should be on my right because I'm right handed.
Now I've decided that my brown is too brown and not orangey enough. So I'm going to wait for it to dry because I can't change the color. I can't add any color when it's started to dry. Because that will cause all kinds of texture issues. And Reuben making his crazy noises under the table. He's a very vocal person. Now, I'm going to add a bit more colour at the back here, which is always a risk because once the paint has started to dry, if you add more paint, you risk, as they say, a cauliflower forming. So it's better to get it right first time. There's a lot of white spaces on this. That's because I'm going to do the lettering afterwards. I'm going to take that line right up to that little squirrel down there and then I'm going to use a white gel pen, I think, to mark the transition between one squirrel and another. So I have an idea, by the way, for what I'm going to do with these little squirrel faces. These little vampire squirrel faces. I don't know, folks, you do your best. So I'm trying to keep my paint even in concentration so that everything looks the right shade of brown, the right depth of brown. But having said that, my um, squirrels are too brown and not orangey enough. So I'm going to do, when it's all dry, I'm going to do a wash of orange over the surface. <sighs> okay, what's next? Gosh, I can see loads of bits that I haven't rubbed out. <sighs> you have to be careful to get it all. Okay, we'll leave that little person there for a few minutes before we go on to do a second layer. Okay, so now I can see a couple of bits that weren't quite finished. Okay, I might as well do the burnt umber Payne's Grey mix for the balsamic vinegar bottle. You can hear the early spring birds chirping away outside. I used to feed the birds with a lovely bird planter. It was lovely watching little birds. And they say once you start doing that you shouldn't stop because they'll they'll have come to rely on the source of food 
but I had to stop because I was getting a massive rat problem and that's no good so I've used a very concentrated uh, mix of Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber for the balsamic thinner bottle and you can see there's a lot of highlights left unpainted to make the glass look a bit shiny should I should be careful with this one because I don't want it to stray into the squirrel's fur paint is wet I can hear swans flying overhead down the river you can hear the beat of their wings. So I'm putting the colours on that I want to give it time to dry before doing whatever thing is next to them. So for example, now this little pot is kind of an off-white ceramic and in its darkest sections it kind of looks a bit Payne's greyish. Now I'm not finished with that I'm going to come back to it in a second but I just want to do the exact same thing oh, I can see some pencil lines that weren't quite rubbed out so I'm going to put the colour on and then I'm going to dry off my brush Hang on, I have to do a little bit of knife as well. A few little diagonal stripes for the for the shine. Okay, so back around here. The reason I'm turning it around is so that I don't end up putting my paw into wet paint. So I'm just softening off those borders so that it makes the, the paint's grey look a little softer and a bit more like kind of off-white. Again, we've got the highlights down the middle to make it look a bit shiny. Now, it might end up looking a bit metallic or grey, but that's not too too much of a problem. Okay, what's next? Okay, so I guess I can't do the green leaves yet because there's too much wet paint right next to it. So I'm going to make a colour for the pear. It's a conference pear, so it's kind of a a yellow green and I'm using sap green do a bit of a shine in it I'm doing sap green mixed with Aquarius yellow but I'm pretty non prescriptive about colors I suppose what I'm saying is any yellow will do fine there's a nice little shine on that pair the same for the peel, keeping it away from that Payne's Grey. I think I nicked it there a tiny bit. Um, what's next? Okay, um, I'm going to do a yellow ochre cork. Sorry, I brought this swinging around. The yellow ochre mixed with a bit of burnt sienna just to make the yellow ochre a little bit less yellow. Okay now, um, so now I'm going to do a little bit of pink on the cheek. So this is quinacridone, cherry quinacridone red. I have a little bit of a pink on the fingers 
and on the little paws. Will I put it on the nose as well? I don't know yet. I, I, I don't have to hurry about that. I can I can come back to that and I won't have any effect on anything else. I know squirrels have got like big, huge black eyes with twinkles in the middle, but I just, it's not my eye of choice. So I prefer to do it with um, just a little dot. It's it's just, that's the way it works for me. I. It's just, I don't know, what can I say? It's uh, the way I like to draw, draw eyes. So I'm dabbing on the colour, making sure that it's even if I can. And I don't even know if it's a good idea to put pink cheeks on the squirrel's face, but I just like them. Do squirrels get pink noses? I'm not sure. Or do, it, does that increase the whole uh, the whole vampire look? It might do, you know. So I'm putting on the noses and I'll come back to them and soften off the edge so they don't look so blob-like, although I kind of like the blob look. It's kind of cute, isn't it? Okay, what's next? Um, oh, I'm mixing some yellow and some um, yellow ochre and I'm going to put it on the cheese edge. Maybe a bit on the top as well. God, this is must be very annoying to watch with all the different angles. I'll try and stop doing that. I don't want you to get seasick. What I'm doing is I'm putting it on the outside rim of the cheese. And then I'll bring it in a little bit. Because that's what happens with cheese. It's kind of darker on the outside, isn't it? And colour those little blobs are supposed to be cheese. Oh, I forgot the walnuts. So walnuts are fun to do. Basically, we're talking yellow ochre. Yellow ochre with a little kind of a whitish splodge in the middle. And then when that's completely dry, I'll go tucking in around the, the, the walnuty bits with some darker brown. Okay, so this is supposed to be a um, wood turned bowl. So like that, I am going to start off with a yellow ochre base. And uh, then I'll fiddle around with the browns once that is try to make them a little bit deeper. We've got a frying pan and we have a little tree. So I'm going to paint this tree. Oh, I knew I was forgetting something. I forgot to paint that that wood turned bowl. So um, again, the same technique where I put on some darker colour and then let it soften up oh Jesus what was that oh god spring place is full of birds doing birdy things okay I'm going to do some pear skin sorry didn't I say I wasn't going to flip it around okay I'm going to do some pear skin next And what I'm doing here is I'm just darkening it up around the outside, leaving it for a couple of seconds, like, I don't know, 30 seconds for it to dry a bit. 
and then I'm going to do that same thing with the dried off brush clean dried off no paint on it so I'm using it as a kind of a blending tool I'm just softening off that brown There we go. I think I might do that a tiny bit more. See that that shine is a bit too shiny because pears aren't that glossy. So I'm going to take my brush and just soften the inside of that little sheen to make it a bit softer. Same with the other one. Put a burnt umber for the stem. And the golden rule here is that the paint will only go where there's any water. There's some sticks. Now, time for a bright green mixed with yellow for the rocket. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a beautiful bright green made with sap green and Aquarius yellow I'm going to paint my leaves. And then I'm going to wait for that to dry. And then when it's fully dry, I'll start darkening up around it. And it'll look more realistic then. I always start with the lightest colour and then go on to the darker one. Okay, so I've got, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to do some um, some strands of blue through the blue cheese. Kind of blue cheese looking. Mm. There you go, it's a little bit oranger. So watercolour will go on top of another watercolour once it's completely dry. And also when it's completely dry, I'm going to do a little bit of darkening with burnt umber at the back of each little squirrel. supposed to be pink. Starting to rain again. My goodness, it's been wet the last couple of days. mustn't have your paint too concentrated for this because if you do you run the risk of lifting a bit more rubber shavings there you run the risk of lifting the color underneath
steeping of the brown to differentiate the little running squirrel's head. Here we go. Um, okay, what's next? Okay, time for some nice bright green for the mossy rocks. Same shade as for the for the rocket. Okay, we'll leave that to, oh no, a little bit of grassy edge. And next is deepening up around that rocket. Just by darkening around the rocket leaves, you actually make it look like there's lots of it. Um, what's next? So a little bit of shading goes a long way. This run, colour run, is kind of annoying. So not a huge amount more to do. Re-putting on that pink cheek because it's quite nice sinking into the orangey wash that I did. So just to reiterate, because I know people always ask what colours have I used. OK, I've used burnt sienna, let it dry and then put a wash of quinacridone cherry red. And these ones, look at these, these aren't, these aren't really working because the paint was the wrong, the wrong amount of wetness when I put that little extra pink cheek on. But it, I might be able to rescue it by putting another blob on when it's dry. So cherry cornacridone red for the cheeks, burnt sienna for the squirrels with an overlay of um, Aquarius orange. And I will be adding little bits of um, burnt umber to darken up the squirrel at the back. Then I've got very dilute Payne's grey for the, the olive oil container and Payne's grey and burnt umber for the um, balsamic vinegar bottle. I've got sap green and Aquarius yellow for the leaves. And I'm going to do some rocks now. And what else have we got? So the blue cheese is a very, very dilute mix of yellow and burnt umber. And then when that's a bit drier, I've got some phthalo blue. I forgot to mention that at the time. Um, what else have we got? I suppose Aquarius yellow for the flames, yellow ochre for the little pot. But I would say all this is kind of like the first, the first sort of stage. After this, I have to add little bits of dark here and there to make all the colors really bright and stand out. OK, I've done a little bit more painting and my job now is to wait for things to dry a little bit so that I can do the lettering. So I'll get back to you then. So here is the finished page. I would love to have shown you how I did the lettering, but I have to really concentrate when I'm doing my lettering. So I couldn't show you how to do it when I was actually doing it. Well, I hope that's been really helpful for you as well and will help you get on with painting the drawing that you've done 
in class and that you have picked up a load of tips all about timing and concentration, dilution. Those are the three things that you really need to understand. And then you can do anything with watercolour. Good luck. Enjoy it. And here's a salad that the squirrel made earlier. It didn't have any walnuts, so it's got pumpkin seeds, but it's just as nice. Talk to you the next time. Bye now. <laughs>